Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us, joining us here on site and virtually on this beautiful rainy day. Um, great performance by the Native Pride dancers. Thank you so much, um, and great to see you, and thank you for your performance. I'm Al Bangora. I'm the superintendent of the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board. I'm happy to be here at Waterworks, the next in a line of visionary projects that have transformed Minneapolis Riverfront into the destination it is today. What an amazing and wonderful day. We're standing at a spot um, with great spiritual, cultural, and economic significance to our city and to our region. First, we collectively acknowledge that the site and the whole of Minneapolis park system is located on traditional, ancestral, and contemporary lands of indigenous people. This land holds great historical, spiritual, and personal significance for its original stewards, the native nations and peoples of this region. A big part of Waterworks is to acknowledge the indigenous histories that predate any notion of the city of Minneapolis. This project provides a platform to tell the indigenous history surrounding the riverfront and to celebrate the Native American culture. We do that through art. We do that through the plants and the landscaping throughout the site. And we do that through our partnership with the sous chef, which will be opening the restaurant in the pavilion soon. I look forward to that. I cannot wait for this uh, restaurant to open and try the amazing food. And I have no doubt it's going to be probably one of the most popular places down here. And uh, I'm looking forward to that uh, very much. I'm also excited to see how we can elevate Native American cultures through events and educational opportunities at Waterworks. When we look at the history of the city of Minneapolis, it starts right here on the riverfront. It grew up around the riverfront sawmills and flour mills. 
Remnants of these mills were uncovered, preserved, and weaved into the structures throughout the waterworks pavilion. The mills declined in the mid-1900s, followed by the new central riverfront revitalization. It started with the Fujiya, which was the first new building in what had become an abandoned industrial area of Minneapolis when it opened on this site in 1968. Wooden beams from Fujiya were preserved and reused as stairs in the pavilion. When Fujiya was closed in 1990, the park board bought the land in the area of riverfront development. This includes the Stone Arch Bridge, uh, converting from a railroad bridge to a trail connection for bikers and walkers that we obviously see here every day by the thousands on that beautiful bridge. An expansion of trails and linear parks on the West Parkway, West River Parkway, and the development of the Mill Ruins Park and Boom Island Park. And as you take a look around at these parks and trails, the residential towers and the office buildings that surround us, the history like the Stern Arch Bridge and the Mill Ruins Park, it's incredibly tough to imagine Minneapolis that didn't have these attractions, pillars of our cities, and what has acclaimed us to the quality of life living in this beautiful city. But most of this was built over a period of a few recent decades. And it was built thanks to visionary planning and smart and generous partners. Partners who recognize the shared benefit of riverfront development for the public. So now the exciting part, talk a little bit about the uh, project itself. So today we're celebrating the opening of an outdoor park. The park pavilion is not yet open, but it will open uh, when the sous chef opens later this summer. The park is about three acres in total. It covers roughly two blocks between Fifth Avenue and the Third Avenue Bridge. The landscape shows the immense stone remnant walls along with the industrial relics unearthed during the construction. And some of those to the right you can see, and it's really cool to look at. Native plants, many with medicinal and edible properties are planted throughout the site. So the rain we're experiencing today are helping those grow. So great for the rain. And the site will reuse water collected from the three neighboring buildings for irrigation and gray water in the pavilion. That aspect of the park was funded by our partners, the Mississippi Watershed Management Organization. They have been outstanding partners on many projects that we work on together. And they do amazing work to improve our water quality, not only in our parks, but in our city. I'm standing in General Mills Plaza, which features three gas fire pits and public seating under the uh, magnificent cottonwood tree. Uh, moving south, there's the Bank of America City Steps, which creates a series of green terraces for social seating. A winding accessible walkway connects the plaza to Columbia Terrace above, which offers an upper event area and lawn that will have outdoor seating for Awamini. There's a mezzanine long next to the city steps that offers a wide green space to relax and gather uh, and overlooking the beautiful riverfront. Nature Play Lab uh, by Caroline Amplants, which is directly behind us, is a nature-themed a nature playground for small children at the north end of the site near the Third Avenue Bridge. Improved trail connections, walkways, parkways, crossing and lighting on the West River Parkway and First Street all contribute towards an improved experience for park visitors. So I want to thank everyone again for joining us today on this incredible day. Thanks to the Minneapolis Parks Foundation. I can't say that enough. Thank you to the Minneapolis Parks Foundation. Our parks are built on long-term ambitious plants, uh, uh, plans like River First, which you will hear more about later. These ambitious plans only happen due to generous partners like the Parks Foundation and its supporters. Now I'm excited to share a short video showing many of the park features I just described. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Tom Evers. As the executive director of the Minneapolis Parks Foundation, I am honored to stand here today as Waterworks at Mill Rooms Park is open to the public. So much has changed in our city since we began this work, yet one truth endures. Parks are critical to our health and our well-being. In Minneapolis, our park system continually stri is continually striving to provide places where everyone feels welcome. In the past year, particularly, parks has con have connected us, they've healed us, they've helped us feel whole. Public parks are more important than ever before. I want to thank the Minneapolis Parks and Recreation Board of Commissioners and their staff for their partnership in bringing forth a park that both meets the moment we are in as a city and that will be an enduring representation of who we are becoming. From the initial community engagement process through the concept design phase to the final touches, the park board centered the community's aspirations for a new type of park. We, are, we strove to ensure that this work mirrors the community. Senator, uh, Superintendent Bangora, uh, uh, President uh, Cowgill, thank you for your leadership through this process. Uh, we, and thank you to the staff for their commitment to the values of the community. Waterworks is just one park within River First, a broader vision that will line the once industrial riverfront above these falls with a network of parks and trails connecting north and northeast Minneapolis neighborhoods to the Mississippi River. The Parks Foundation was honored to be there alongside to offer professional expertise through engagement, design, and construction, and to develop the case for support. I want to thank the Parks Foundation staff and the board for their hard work over the many years in helping deliver a new park that represents the community's aspirations. Thank you. From the beginning, the Minneapolis Parks Foundation knew that this site offered an opportunity to celebrate the vibrant indigenous community among us and would require additional resources to fully meet our vision, the community's vision. Philanthropic investment is most meaningful when it's aligned with our public priorities. Taxpayers, voters, voters and elected officials of Minneapolis and Minnesota contribute every day to ensure that our community invests in itself. Countless community members participated in envisioning this park with us. The Central Riverfront Community Advisory Committee, the St. Anthony Falls Heritage Board, Healing Places Collaborative, the Waterworks Project Advisory Committee, residents in the neighborhood, and numerous cultural advisors added their voices to this final design. To all of you, thank you. I also want to recognize the design and construction teams that guided an incredibly complex project to completion. Damon Farber Associates, especially Tom Whitlock, Whitlock and Gene Gabarini, HGA, including Tim Carl, Michael Harrow, Robert Good, Joan Serrano, and John Cook, and HU Construction with Joel Horn and Rich Mitchell. So many people had hands on this project. Thank you. And finally, I want to thank our donors who contributed. Thank you so much. The primary, as a primary philanthropic partner to the Minneapolis Park System, we invited the community to deliver on this promise, and so many of you responded generously. To all of our donors, including General Mills Foundation, Paul and Mary Riles, Margaret and Angus Wordle, the Polhead Family Foundation, Bank of America, the board members of the Parks Foundation, and so many, many more, thank you. Your contributions made this possible, and I look forward to meeting you here to thank you in person. I can't wait for you to experience this completed space. It's astounding. To show you more about River First and the campaign, I turn to Paul Riles, Paul, the chair of the Capital Campaign Committee and generous donor to this project, and two of our other lead donors to say a few words about this moment. When we began planning for the River First Capital Campaign projects a decade ago, it felt vital and important. Today, beyond a doubt, parks have proven to be the common ground our city needs to build community through shared experience. With the opening of Waterworks and the overlook at 26th Avenue North, two new opportunities to restore a life-affirming relationship with the Mississippi River are now available to everyone in our community. 
And we're two steps closer to fulfilling the founding vision of Minneapolis Parks, that all waterfront in our city is protected for generations to come. To our delight, so many of you believed in that vision and helped us reach our $18 million goal. I thank you. As chair of the River First Capital Campaign, I am honored to join so many individuals and organizations in helping to make what was a vision 10 years ago a reality today. On behalf of General Mills, I want to express how honored and delighted we are to join with all of you to help make this community vision become a reality today. Waterworks will be a resource for all who call this region home and all who pass through it, and one that will last for generations to come. And what an incredibly special place this is, beyond being the very site where General Mills took root more than a century and a half ago, we saw in Waterworks a gathering place, one that could help to honor, connect, and celebrate the rich tapestry of people and cultures and stories which make the Twin Cities so vibrant and beautiful. Our heartfelt thanks and congratulations from General Mills to all the community partners here today, but especially to the Minneapolis Parks Foundation for your unwavering commitment to ensure that it was community voices and vision that helped to shape how this riverfront could best enrich lives and serve all members of the community well into the future. Thank you. River First is a broad vision of transforming 11 miles of once industrial Mississippi riverfront that flows through the heart of Minneapolis. With the opening of Waterworks, this bold vision is manifesting itself into reality. Bank of America is honored to participate in such an important project. Thank you to the Minneapolis Parks Foundation and all of the individuals, organizations, and companies in our community who have made this into a reality. Together, we're transforming our relationship with the riverfront, making it welcoming for all, not just for now, but for future generations. Welcome back everybody and uh, hello on this rainy morning. Uh, my name is John O'Cogill. I am the Park and Recreation Board President. I'm so excited to be here today to mark the opening of this incredible space. Uh, it's sort of fitting that on a rainy day when after we've faced a lot of challenges in our city and we're looking to make sure that everybody feels safe and welcome in our public spaces, uh, that we're seeing a kind of a rebirth through the rain at a site that is incredibly important to so many cultures and so many histories. Uh, all the work that the community has done has been realized uh, in this incredible space uh, that is really uh, made encapsulated by the sous chef and the incredible uh, new restaurant that's going to be here. I want to thank Sean Sherman. I want to thank Dana Thompson and the entire Awamni team for uh, coming here and partnering with the park board with the Minneapolis Parks Foundation and with all the other uh, donors and supporters who've realized this community vision on this historic site. It's great to celebrate this historic site, um, but there are many more exciting milestones that are, are coming uh, forward soon. Um, the pavilion and restaurant, of course, will be open very soon. Um, we also have a very exciting public art opportunity that is currently out for uh, proposals um, through the city of Minneapolis. And uh, I'm very excited about that to, to have even more opportunities for public art at this site, which is one of the busiest and most iconic sites in the entire state of Minnesota. So this project is something that would not have happened without vision, without community support uh, and community uh, engagement, and without all uh, of the many dedicated visionary partners that have uh, worked tirelessly on a very complex and difficult project uh, to, to realize this thing. Uh, so again, I, as I mentioned, the Minneapolis Parks Foundation has done incredible work and we are so thankful for Tom Evers, uh, for the entire Parks Foundation Board who uh, have continued to partner with the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board uh, on visionary projects that center equity and community voice. 
I want to say also that uh, the MWMO has been a critical partner in uh, realizing this project, uh, thinking about our stormwater retention and how we're innovative um, in ensuring that uh, stormwater is stored uh, correctly at the site. Uh, all of these partnerships uh, take a very, uh, it's a very complex and, and Im important uh, project uh, to, to invest in here. We also want to note some of the other projects that MWMO has supported, including uh, not just Waterworks, but Halls Island, the 26th Avenue Overlook, and the Elliott Park Skate Park. The city of Minneapolis has been a critical partner, of course, and we'll hear more from our Minneapolis partners here in a moment. So as I've said, a lot of people have worked on this project. This is about history. It's about the native space that, that uh, really developed here, but it's also about looking towards the future. And if this kind of project is any indication for the future of our public spaces, I think we have a bright future ahead. And I'm very excited uh, by, by this space, and I really welcome everybody and encourage everybody to come out here um, and make this space your own. So now I'd like to introduce a video with remarks from some of our partners who are unable to join us here today. Thank you very much. Waterworks is coming online at a really critical moment in our city as we emerge from all of the difficulty of 2020 and early 2021. People are wanting to gather. They're wanting to reconnect with family members and friends. And this particular location on the Mississippi River has always been a location where people can gather and celebrate who we are as a people. Minneapolis residents have always counted on their elected officials and organizations to partner, to partner, to do extraordinary things. And that's exactly what's happening right now between the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board and the Parks Foundation uh, to make an extraordinary project that is, in fact, Waterworks. We want to make sure that every bit of potential along this location is realized. We want to make sure that the history is acknowledged. This is obviously a critical location for our Native community. And by the way, we're going to be able to get some extraordinary food as well and cuisine through the sous chef. So I can't wait to see you out there. Waterworks is going to be an exceptional our outdoor green spaces are part of what make Minneapolis a great city to live in, and I'm so excited the city could partner with the Park Board on the newest edition, Waterworks Park. Thank you all so much and congratulations to everybody who's made this happen. It's a terrific addition to our parks infrastructure. Uh, it, it honors our past with its design and with interpretive signs, and it's going to invite people to enjoy our riverfront for decades to come. Thanks again and congratulations. Hello, my name is Doug Snyder. I'm Executive Director at the Mississippi Watershed Management Organization. And on behalf of staff and our Board of Commissioners, I'd like to say it's been a privilege to have collaborated with the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board and all the other partners and contributors uh, in the design and development of Waterworks Park. Waterworks uh, can certainly be a transformative riverfront project, and we think it will be. We hope that Waterworks Park will inspire educate and lead to further action on a shared vision for the development uh, along the Mississippi River. And we're looking forward to the day when we can be there in person. Until then, congratulations on a terrific project. Good morning on this rainy morning. I'm Dorothy Bridges, Chair of the Minneapolis Parks Foundation Board of Directors. I'm delighted to be here with you this morning celebrating the completion of waterworks in Mill Ruins Park. The mission of Minneapolis Parks Foundation is to transform lives by aligning community vision and philanthropic investment. However, that has nowhere has that been more than true than here at Waterworks, where the very landscape we're standing on, Dakota homeland, and sacred to both Dakota and Anishinaabe, is once again honored as a gathering place, a place of connection, and a testament of the power of St. Anthony Falls. As a rejuvenated public space, we look forward to the community filling this place with diverse voices, cultures, and experiences. The Waterworks Park and Pavilion are created as places of storytelling, where we can gather, connect with each other and the Mississippi River, and add our own stories to the history of this iconic site. We're grateful for all the people who have come together to support River First Capital Campaign, especially the numerous companies, individuals, families, foundations who contributed to this effort, including General Mills and Bank of America, whom you heard from earlier. 
To all of those who gave to this effort, know that this park will be enjoyed by millions of people beginning today. Thank you. I want to thank Paul Ryotz for his leadership in guiding the fundraising effort and guiding the vision along the way. And I want to thank all the Parks Foundation board members and capital campaign members who worked so hard to make this vision a reality. We thank you for joining us on this journey and believing in this tremendous vision. Finally, we are thrilled to mark this momentous milestone with our partners at the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board for their leadership, vision for the future, and hard work, as well as innumerable community collaborators, the City of Minneapolis, the Mississippi Watershed Management Organization, the sous chef, and many other community groups and individuals who helped us arrive at this day. We stand with all of you in committing to fulfill the founding vision for our parks that all waterfront in Minneapolis be protected and welcoming to all. This year taught us how, vitality, how vitally important our parks and public pace, places are for our community health and well-being. Beginning today, we will have one more place to come together and to reflect on the natural beauty around us. In any other year, we would have planned to mark this important milestone together in person with all of you, our partners, supporters, neighbors, and friends. I invite you to please come along with us as we cut the ceremonial red ribbon and officially open Waterworks as a special place for all cultures to tell their story, past, present, and future. With that, we hope you'll come to visit soon and make Waterworks part of your story too. Thank you. <laughs> it's a little rusty. It's a little cut. Yeah. Uh, the oil is a little bit. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. I think everybody is fine. Get the signal to do it. Are we all We're set? Good. We all set? Yeah. All right. Okay. Here we go. Squawking Nation, I'm going to demonstrate another dance known as the Curl Hop. Enjoy. Hoka! Yeah, yeah! Yeah, yeah! 